it is 12 p.m. in New York, 6 p.m. in Johannesburg, and 11 p.m. in Bangkok. Welcome to In Transit with Sunday Bean, recording live from my childhood uh, womb home in Williston, North Dakota. I am an intercultural strategist, transformation facilitator, and solution-oriented coach, and I'm on a mission to help you adapt and succeed through any life transition. The late, great Maya Angelou made the following famous. A bird doesn't sing because it has an answer. It sings because it has a song. Today's guest has created a platform in which we can hear the songs of others from the individuals themselves. It's an opportunity to hear songs of strength, resilience, and inspiring journeys. So before we dive into these stories, I'd like to welcome today's guest, Kondwani Mawase. Welcome to In Transit, Kondwani. Thank you so much for having me, Sunday. Um, it's a privilege to be here, and um, I'm really um, excited to uh, be on this platform of yours. Audience Chatting to one. you um, from your childhood spot. Yeah, I was saying before we went live that I had to hide the creepy, you know, monkey and Kermit the Frog and Cabbage Patch dolls um, so people wouldn't be distracted uh, from the episode. <laughs> So for those who are watching the video live, but this is if this is on the podcast, you'll have to go to the video and, and have a look at the images in the background of my mother in a beauty pageant from like the 50s or 60s and our childhood farm from um, the late 1800s. <laughs> That's like a bonus of watching the video version. So let me tell a little bit more about Kondwane um, before we dive in. Kondwane is an entrepreneur, an accomplished marketing professional with over a decade of experience in fields of engagement loyalty and communications. You can definitely see that in his podcast. He is a true believer in the power of standing in solidarity and is the man behind 54 Lights. This is the show that we will talk about um, in more detail today. It is a wonderful podcast, a showcase for African accomplishment and engages in conversations to introduce audience to other perspectives and sheds light on untold stories. Kondwani is no stranger to life in transit. He was born in Addis Abeba in Ethiopia, resides in Toronto, Canada, and is a proud citizen of Malawi. So Kondwani, I'm really excited to learn from you today and to share your story and others. Um, but before we start, I want to just say um, to my audience, one of the reasons I wanted Kondwani to be on here is because I just have podcast envy for his voice. So <laughs> I was like, oh, he's got a great podcast voice. So it's great our listeners get to enjoy too- that uh, today. <laughs> I'm, I'm not too sure that that's uh, that's uh, that's true. I uh, but I, I really appreciate that. Hopefully, it's it's the mic. It's all about the mic. <laughs> check, check check one check two. So um, let me tell the audience a little bit about Fifty Four Lights. Uh, I love the vision. Um, it offers an alternative to mainstream depictions of Africa and its people. It celebrates resilience, strength, and extraordinary journeys of the guests and. What I've heard and learned from you is that it's through these untold stories, it is your aim to change the stereotypical narrative that persists from dark to light. So say more to our audience about the story behind the podcast and what led you to the project. Yeah, and and thanks for this platform again, um, Sunday. And I think you captured it in that in that intro is that, you know, I, I've I've always had a bit of a... Um, a mixed identity, if you will, or, or cobbled together identity. Um, you know, born in Ethiopia, as, as mentioned before, my mom is actually from Zimbabwe and my dad mm. is from Malawi and even a lot of Malawians. He was born in Zambia. So it's this, it's this sort of like hyphenated uh, existence mm-hmm. that I have. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I make my home in Canada right, right now. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's no question that I have this Canadian flavor to who I am as a person. I can't, I can't reject that, nor do I want to. Um, But what I found really, really interesting in in talking to people throughout my life was like, oh, you know, people would talk about, hey, I'm going to Europe, Um, I'm going to France, I'm going to Germany, I'm going to Paris, I'm going to, you know, London. Uh, And they would Mm -hmm. talk very specifically about places that they were going. And in in contrast, in stark contrast, when they said, I'm going to Africa, they would literally say, I'm going to Africa. And I just remember for myself, I'm like, 
Africa is, 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 you know, it's the largest continent, you know, on, on earth. There are like so many different countries. Um, there are so many different peoples. There's so many different, and even within those peoples, mm-hmm. there are like, there's so much fragmentation there. Right. And not in a bad way, but in a beautiful way. And so I just, um, I got really enthralled with this idea of telling those stories, telling that side of the African experience, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. even though I'm sort of like lumping it all into one, what I'm trying to do is very being very specific and intentional about telling each different mm-hmm. country's story. And within mm-hmm. that, I also acknowledge and know that I'm not doing that because mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. telling one person's story. Mm-hmm. But it is really this collection of different stories that come together that I think make a beautiful and relatable um, narrative for mm-hmm. people who are from Africa, but who mm-hmm. are also not from Africa, because there's just so much richness in just all of those stories. So that's why I kind of named it 54 mm-hmm. Lights, because mm-hmm. it's about, you know, 54 different countries. So at least 54 mm-hmm. different perspectives, but it's this idea of turning on the lights and illuminating mm-hmm. um, and introducing people mm-hmm. to other people from a cultural perspective. I, love I hope that answers idea. your question. Yeah, I love I love this idea of turning on the lights. And so my background, I have to share again, people got to watch the video version of this. Here's the coffee cup that I had this morning. It says, have no fear, the Norwegian is here, right? Like there, <laughs> there's a lot, a lot going on with that. Um, I am originally from North Dakota and there's the Scandinavian heritage, right? And the the identity from from Scandinavia, but there's actually beyond left sun ludifisk on, you know, Christmas, there isn't other um, like tangible cultural practices, you know, from Norway. Um, and <laughs> people tend to lump things together, right? And when you don't have knowledge, you, it's dark, like you said, you need to turn the lights on, or you fill it in with the most available mm-hmm. piece of information. And I, I'm I'm kind of being playful here with the coffee cup because you can understand where I was born and raised. There was there was not a lot to p- draw from, and in fact, think about what there was to draw from. You know, being born and raised in Williston, North Dakota, um, myths, stereotypes, um, exotic films, right? And and what I'm hearing you do yeah. is saying if if there is dark. Uh, of not knowing, right? And you want to turn lights on, turn on lights with like everyday lived experience with real people's lives with their successes, right? That's, that's, a, that's, um, you've caught another really um, important thread that I'm trying to, 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 to have flow through, through, through the podcast, which is this idea of undertold stories, right? And mm-hmm. it's this idea that, you know, on, on the whole, you know, your uh, perception of a place or a, a country or people's can be painted through a rather generalist brush Mm -hmm. because of the one person who maybe has made it to fame or this, you know, like these Mm -hmm. different, um, um, these different peaks, if you will. Mm -hmm. But uh, like culture is so rich. It's so textured. It's so layered. And, you know, it's my commitment to kind of tell as many undertold stories. And Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's the, the, you know, sort of like, if you will, the tagline of it, because it's, it's in those softer, um, softer stories that are a little bit under the surface, where true mm-hmm. culture lives and born mm-hmm. is born and thrives, actually. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's what gives texture to a people, a country, a place. So it's yeah. really, um, you know, that that's the important um, or, or another important angle that I um, that I, I propose and then that that mm-hmm. I, I hope flows through through uh, through my platform, but also through this one as well. Right. And it also gives access, you know, one way that a lot of the people in my community um, we call globally mobile get to live in multiple places and get those stories through their their relationships and their lived experience. But not everybody gets to do that. And this is a way for you to bring that story and that experience to people's um, to their home. So I'm curious from you. um, Why? Why now? Like, why is this conversation important now? Yeah, I mean, wow, that's a that's a fantastic question. I think, you know, I think now more than ever, right? Uh, so I, I, you know, just you know, again, not to not to be so um, um, 
you know, egoist, but it's self-reflective. I did start this journey a few years ago, mm-hmm. um, and it was much more of a like a personal journey, something that I just wanted to, um, I wanted to get out there. It was a passion project, right? That's that's mm-hmm. the, the the common term. So it was a passion project of mine, and I love talking to people. So I was just sort of like, hey, this let me just marry my. It's not a gift, my, maybe my mm-hmm. curse of of wanting to <laughs> chat with people and 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 this aspiration of mine. I think what what has happened over the past few years now more than ever feels like a more important time for us to realize and and introduce ourselves and respect and understand different cultures because we're at a time where um you know it's a global society and for good or for bad you know the mm-hmm. people across the street across the pond across the river mm-hmm. um they're important to our growth they're important to yeah. our fulfillment our uh, you know whether it be um you know basic uh human needs um mm-hmm. all the way to you know aspirational needs or ones that are a little bit more about you know self fulfillment so we are we are more connected than ever i suppose so mm-hmm. it feels like now is a great time to be having this broader discussion about how mm-hmm. we as people can kind of connect and, and meet mm-hmm. each other mm-hmm. and talk to each other and understand each other. Right. I had this interesting um, sort of aha moment. Um, depending on what spiritual practice you have or religious practice, it might be easy to uh, take in this idea of we're all connected. But for me, it's like, yeah, we're all connected. But like, no, we're really connected. <laughs> and this example yeah. came there. <laughs> oh, I was, I yeah. was, you know, I mean, it was like, you know, I get that kind of in theory, but when I was listening to the news and there was a helium shortage in t- two or three of the primary helium producing countries, and it was creating a global shortage at birthday parties, right? But also um, in hospitals and with weather reporting systems. And it was that simple example of like, no, we really are interconnected. Um, And and we see that because how, how, you know, a birthday party is pretty universal. I know that not everybody celebrates uh, birthdays with balloons, but it just felt like you could see it creep into every corner of the world hospitals need you know helium for certain equipment yeah and and, it, and that was definitely connected you know, something we take for granted right? absolutely so invisible in our everyday yeah. lives you know and when i'm in my move um we are moving from south africa to switzerland and the containers are delayed but they're also impacted by a um, rainstorm that happened in south africa because now the the um harbors are shut down like there's this is where this is all getting really messy and interconnected and and i think that's good for us right when we grow up with these ideas of national boundaries and other boxes that we put people in it's so healthy for us as a species to go oh wait a minute we are connected and this is meaningful you know when i do put a pebble in that pond it has a ripple effect um to others Mm mm-hmm so I think that's exciting. Yeah, one hundred percent. And like at first, when I when I think about what you're saying, sometimes you feel like a little bit daunted, a bit scared, a bit like, oh my gosh, you know, like there's there's um, there's a quote unquote consequence to that, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, but at the other end of it, uh, and and somebody told me this is very um, a, a, a fantastic doctor. She was telling me about like, you know, your imagination doesn't have to always go to the negative. Think mm-hmm. of the positive. Mm-hmm. Right. Think of that mm-hmm. positive ripple effect that you can make on other people's lives through your voice, through your platform, mm-hmm. through your video, through, you know, a, a simple act of kindness. So it is one of those things like we are connected, but we have the power to really mm-hmm. to um, to inspire a different outcome. Mm-hmm. We can inspire that ripple effect in a, in a way that mm-hmm. it will be beyond us, but we might not even see it. You know what right. I mean? The outcome of it. But it might be. Yep be changed for good. And I, I know that sounds a little hokey, um, mm. but, you know, and some, sometimes it's nice, it's good to be hokey. And sometimes it's important to realize that that is the power mm. that, that each individual has. Mm-hmm. I think we need a little hokey. I think we need that kind of hope, right? Like <laughs> we do need to, we do need to hold on to that because I mean, that's the coaching side that is as true or truer than this thought of, oh my gosh, you know, we could have a negative impact it's as true or true that we could have a, a, a transformative positive impact. And if we as individuals all focus on that, what can we do to have a positive transformative impact that, that does literally have 
a ripple effect. And I think right now people just need to focus on um, that hope when things are, are hard. Um, I also think we have access to so much with social media and so much is negative because that's what sells news. It's yep. so important to have those positive stories out there to counterbalance the toxic energy that we're getting on other fronts. Yeah, one one hundred percent. And I think it's I, yeah, we, yeah. we do need that balance. Mm-hmm. I, I'm curious um, about the impact of your podcast. Obviously, it has an impact on your listeners, uh, inspiring them, and even probably the guests to be able to tell their story. Um, I'm curious about the impact it's had on you. Whew. Yeah, it's um, it's been profound. It's been profound. I can't I can't express to you how. Um, and actually, one of my guests actually put it in in this way that trying I'll try and paraphrase, but he expressed to me, you know, hey, this is really interesting. You're somebody halfway across the world who I've never met before is reaching out to me and wants to do this interview and talk about all of the art that I'm doing and sort of celebrate and elevate it. But I don't know you. Um, you know, I listen to a couple of your podcasts. They seem like they're right. They're, they're on the right track. So that's why he he re- reciprocated with a yes, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll do the interview. And mm-hmm. in that in the, the preamble of our conversation before the interview, he just kind of explained it to me and he unpacked that journey of like how he had faith in in in, in somebody else. And it took him mm-hmm. to have faith in somebody else to just sort of say, hey. And in the end, we had a great conversation. We remain friends. So a lot of the people that I interview, I end mm-hmm. up, we check in on each other. We, we, we just say, mm-hmm. hello, how's it going? How's the family? You know, how's work and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And so, you know, I guess what it's taught me about myself is, number one, that I'm a little bit, I, like I'm an extrovert, even though I sort of kind of knew that, but I'm like, I'm an extrovert and I kind of say, Hey, let's go out there. Like just step into mm-hmm. the pool, step into the arena, whatever the term you want to use. So it's taught me that I've got a little bit more of that, um, uh, that in me than I thought I, I did maybe, you know, five years ago. Um, and the other thing it's taught me really is how much I really, <laughs> I really like people and, uh, and how much I think people there there's a lot of like good people out there with mm-hmm. a lot of interesting um interesting deep perspectives and when you just mm-hmm. ask a question and when you just listen there's something um there's something really uplifting about that something that mm-hmm. that that I find to be really fulfilling but I love how that would translate to my audience right so mm-hmm. i guess uh i'm i'm it's a roundabout way I, i've learned a lot about you know, my ability uh, to, to sort of leap into it. But I've also learned mm-hmm. how, even though I'm not listening today, how much listening to other people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is, is also in a way therapeutic for me, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like when you listen to someone else's story, you can find your shared humanity or you find a level of depth of humanity that you hadn't yet um, considered. So through, yeah. through my platform, very selfishly, it allows me to sort of tease back and, and open the onion and say, okay, sure. I see mm-hmm. the end point. I see the thing you've built. I see mm-hmm. the thing you've designed. Mm-hmm. I see the thing that you're t- working on now, but tell me about the journey to get up there, right? Tell mm-hmm. me about how mm-hmm. you, how you put that together. And sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes the journey is the thing, you know, like, and mm-hmm. that's, that's what I find to be, um, immensely important. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when people peel back their journey, we also can have a little bit more grace for our own because when you're in your journey and it's hard or it's not working or it's not going as fast as you want it to, it feels really good (laughs) to look at someone who's successful and go, oh, they had that experience too, right? Um, Yeah. 100%. 100%. Mm-hmm. That's so good. So I'm really curious. Um, I'm not, I, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> um, this isn't rehearsed. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a couple questions uh, about your story, right? We've been talking about other people's stories. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about your stories. And just for context, you know, something that I share often on the podcast is about ambitious transformation and transition. And we always start at the end. And that means in transition, 
that could be a global transition, professional transition, health transition, relationship transition, all of those things could be happening at the same time. I'd love to hear yeah. what are the transitions that you're feeling right now? Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm feeling a lot of them, uh, to be honest with you. And, and on, on all of those different fronts, so on, you know, on a professional front, uh, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've got a kind of like a new day job, which is it introduces me to uh, a bunch of different artists, a bunch of different people who support the arts in Canada specifically, but mm -hmm. they, they reach out to a global world as well. And so I'm in transition there because I'm understanding a new, a new role, a new job, a new ecosystem. And I'm also learning how to, um, you know, to sort of like, I guess to kind of like commit my whole self to to work in mm. in a way that I typically I'm typically put walls and say well this is my work personality and I don't want to show this and this mm -hmm. is my personal and I, I I be very intentional about but dividing it so mm -hmm. I'm in transition to sort of try and bring my whole self to every mm -hmm. part of what I do so mm -hmm. not just the podcast but in this case my professional um mm -hmm. professional world can I go a little um, bit deeper with that I'm so you're, the, not, you're not going to get sure. away with this one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I, I, so I, I resonate. Nice. I'm I, yeah, no, I resonate with that because here's why I want to go deeper because I have been on that journey too. Um, I, you know, bec probably because of so much corporate experience in S Switzerland, I, there was a personal and professional separation. There's private life and then there's professional life. And um, and that felt safe. And as I've had my own company and the work that I've done, I, whether I chose it or not, I don't know. I decided, or it started happening that I brought more of my personal, my whole self into my work. And for me, that felt vulnerable. I'm curious how it feels for you to bring your whole self into your professional context. Yeah, that's, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump on a word that you, you, you just used, which is that vulnerability, right? Um, I have, and I realized that part of the reason why I did that in my previous, um, roles and in, in, you know, years past was, um, was to be safe, so to speak, mm -hmm. right. Was to mm -hmm. just to not, you know, cause it, I always felt like if you, if you open yourself up, if you expose too much of your personality or if you expose too much about your personal life, your family life, mm -hmm. there was just this element of, um, vulnerability you're exposed. Mm -hmm. And I, I suppose to be honest, a, a lot of fear, um, mm -hmm. in doing so. And, um, and maybe a lack of, um, maybe a lack of trust. I, I'm, I'm not too sure. I'm still sort of maybe, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, teasing that not out, mm -hmm. but it, it was definitely driven, you know, by fear, driven uh, by a, a, a need to not be vulnerable and not so exposed because I thought mm -hmm. that that could, could manifest in, in negative ways. And mm -hmm. um, I think where I'm at now in my career and in my life, so this, this whole um, showing up is, is, is mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do as much as possible throughout my career. My, my life is um, is not to lead with fear mm -hmm. um, and, and not to lead my life with fear, but to lead, you know, maybe with hope to lead with mm -hmm. light, you know, to, to, to go back to my mm -hmm. podcast, to lead with light rather than, than um, you know, dark would, would, would um, connote. Mm -hmm. And so if I lead with light and I lead with um, hope rather than fear, mm -hmm. I think that I, I, I think I contribute better to my ecosystem. And when I say my ecosystem, I mean, mean the one that I'm in at the time yeah. that I'm actually yeah. contributing and I'm helping uplift other people. And that, that is helping other people be, you know, bring their, them show up as well. And if we mm -hmm. both show up or mm -hmm. if we all show up, then the output mm -hmm. will be better. Like it'll just, everything will be better. So what we're doing, the projects we're doing, the uh, goals we're setting, all of the, and the impact we're having on the world will be better. Um, but if I go in and I lead with fear and I'm like, okay, I'm scared somebody's going to take this idea or somebody's going to take this and use it against mm -hmm. me, or, you know, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some, and some of it logical and some of it illogical, um, it's not going to help mm -hmm. in the outcome. 
Right. Totally. I think that makes me think about a moment I had where it was so simple, um, so silly in hindsight, but it felt so big uh, to me at the moment. And it was totally coming from a fear place. I I do this project uh, through Wisdom Fusion, and that's actually how you and I are connected. We have a common friend who, through my Wisdom Fusion project, and um, I had a photo of me that was, it was sensual. It wasn't corporate-y, it wasn't sexual, but it was definitely feminine. And it was a little bit um, mm. different from what I normally share, but it, it, was, it was important for me to share, to share a softer side, right? And my assistant, she was like, hey, let's share this photo and talk about wisdom fusion. And I was like, <gasps> I just like froze. I'm like, I don't know if I could do that. And it was like, nothing was risque about this photo at all, but it showed a feminine, maybe vulnerability. And I was like, I can't make this decision right now. This is about a flipping social media photo. Like, I can't believe how much energy I put into it. I went for a run. I called a friend, right? And I think what it was is I was protecting myself from other people saying, well, what is she doing? Or that's not professional or she, whatever. It was like this fantasy story had my mind. And then I realized if I don't do this, I don't break the boundaries that other women are holding up for themselves, right? Like I have to walk the talk. I have to do that. And it, it's now in hindsight, it's silly, but that's how real the fear can feel. You yeah, know, I, that I had to. I, I, what a what a what a, <laughs> a, a <laughs> tremendous story! But it, it's kind of like mm-hmm. what what you just said there is like the impact that that has on other people, right? Like that mm-hmm. one post, as you say, for you, it's mm-hmm. like okay, it was just like it was one mm-hmm. post, but it, there was a whole lot that went into it in terms of you thinking about mm-hmm. it. But mm-hmm. the 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 um, the freedom that that might give somebody else, or the allowance. Mm-hmm that that might give somebody else or the perspective it might give somebody else. And it just might be one person, right? It might be mm-hmm, like some mm-hmm. somebody you never meet, just somebody who might, mm-hmm, and they might not even mm-hmm. quote, like it, you know, in social right. media, they might not even react right. to it, but just right. seeing it might have mm-hmm. a huge impact. So, mm-hmm. uh, well, I'm glad you made that. I'm glad you made that <laughs> choice, but what exactly mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So do you, can you think of any examples where you have had to, battle through that fear and do something that felt courageous, even though maybe on the outside, it was something small? Yeah, the COVID has been a very um, difficult time for me. And and this this is one of those moments, right, where mm-hmm. I've, I've, I've spoken really uh, openly, or this being what I'm about to mm-hmm. say, um, really openly about, you know, my, my family went through quite a bit of devastation at the beginning of COVID. So I lost my sister unexpectedly, uh, due to ovarian cancer, all the women out there who are, mm-hmm. uh, you know, um, dealing with that. And my heart goes out to you and those who are not, please get yourselves checked. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 uh, it just, it just, it just had this traumatic impact mm-hmm. and, my previous self would have never shared that. And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't share it for pity or for any sort of like, I share it because it's a part of my life and it's a part mm-hmm. of who I am now. And it sort of is also a part of who I'm like motivated by. And um, I had the, uh, the opportunity, I guess, to share this with a, with a recent coworker, a uh, coworker that in a, in a recent interaction. And what ended up happening is we just had this conversation um, about, you know, she was dealing with a tough time. We had a, just a really, just a heartfelt, warm conversation about loss, about life, about what's next, about finding meaning in what you're doing and not, about not sweating the small stuff. And right. it was it was really an important moment for me because it was sort of like one of those moments where it's sort of like I, I allowed myself permission to talk about it. And in doing so, mm-hmm. it just opened up this this conversation and this this connection that I ended up having with this um, this colleague of mine, which wasn't in the grand scheme of things, didn't change the world. It was just mm-hmm. one of those things. It was a moment. Um, I stepped through the moment. Uh, I felt vulnerable doing it as I, I feel vulnerable mm-hmm. doing that now. Mm-hmm. But what happened mm-hmm. afterwards and the connection that I have with with her now, is really, really strong. 
And it just allows mm-hmm. us to be that much closer, that much, you know, we just connected. Mm-hmm. And like I said, so it, it, it yep. it's, um, and sometimes it's not a big thing like that. That, that, that was a relatively big thing in my mm-hmm. life, obviously, or the biggest thing actually in the past, um, you know, <laughs> past two years, mm-hmm. uh, to be frank. But um, the previous me would have never shared that ever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and thank you for sharing that. I, I think um, what I'm hearing in that is you were willing to be authentic. You know, you were, it was just what was true for you. It, and you risked being authentic, right? And what I hear from that story is it created an intimacy or a connection that wouldn't be there had you kind of kept your cards close to your chest, right? And I think when we do 100%. that, right, when we do that, even, I mean, professionally, right, you know, in a professional scope, but still authentically, we give permission to other people to feel safe to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%, 100%. And it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. one of those things that, you know, in professional settings um, and in any settings, right? Like this is kind of an interesting mm-hmm. one as well is, um, we can both win, right? Like ultimately, Mm -hmm. again, in my previous world, it would be like, oh my gosh, Sunday's got a podcast. I've got a podcast. That's Mm -hmm. a competitor, right? Mm -hmm, (laughs) Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. Instead of like, no, there's space and oxygen for us Mm -hmm. both. And I Mm -hmm. want your podcast to succeed. Mm -hmm. I'm actually Mm -hmm. a a, a recent though, uh, but a listener of it. And I love the way you do. I love the way you do Sunday, right? And um (laughs) Sometimes just putting down some of those walls, uh, you Mm -hmm. never know what magic can happen, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I I love that you said putting down the walls. I feel like for me, I had to, I put my guard down. I don't know what I was protecting, but, um, and then I guess through those moments, every moment, big and small, you learn that you're actually safe. And the irony is you're actually safer um, because you create connection and community with people on a much realer level. So what yeah. feels what feels maybe risky um, could be safe. Interesting. So thank you for sharing that. I think that's so important. And for me, it's important to ask those questions because when we share where we really are in transition and they see someone successful like you, we assume that you've got it like gold it's all easy. Right. And it's so important to hear um, what's in the background that people are also holding um, as they are moving forward in the world. So I appreciate that. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, part of the work is around transformation, whether it's internal or external or something that's performance led. Um, Are you feeling more driven by something internal, external or, or performance based right now? Yeah, I think it's um, right now it's, it's the um, I'm being driven, you know, at this, at at this moment in my life or this, this bigger moment, not this second um, in my life to, to accomplish what I set out to do, um, you know, a few years ago with this, you know, in, in relation to this podcast, Mm -hmm. um, which was really to march through the continent, walk Mm -hmm. through the continent and take my listeners on this beautiful journey to meet all of these interesting stories, big or small, uh, from the, from the, Mm -hmm. the, the great continent and just to turn up those lights. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I did a couple Mm -hmm. seasons where, you know, I did, I did did kind of the best I, I could and have had such amazing guests, which have given me the the inspiration and the, the 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 fortitude to say no, there's something here. Let mm-hmm. me let me push mm-hmm. through that line. So I'm really driven. It's not really performance, but I kind of want to be. I'm driven by that that desire to to accomplish that goal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and right. actually have that manifest and 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 become real. You know, yeah. um, so I, I that's that's sort of the journey I'm on now. Uh, you know, and I I'm I'm just on this. Um, you know, so it's not really about performance necessarily, mm-hmm. but rather about saying, hey, um, I can, 
I want to, it seems mm-hmm. to have a good impact on people. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in this that, you know, like it's, it's, it's hard work, uh, mm-hmm. for sure, mm-hmm. but it's, it's rewarding work. And, um, and, and, uh, I think I, I really want to just, um, accomplish this in, mm-hmm. you know, in, in honor of the people that I've spoken to and that I'm, mm-hmm. I continue to speak to mm-hmm. and, and, and the audience as well, who's told me like that they really enjoy it. So, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And that's like, while you are working, while you're a father, while you're a partner, while you're a friend, like you're doing that and all those other things. <laughs> like, that's amazing. Um, and that makes me think of the last part, <laughs> which is um, ambitious, right? So ambitious, I always say, is it has to be defined external to others' ideas of scope and scale, right? We have to define our own ambitious. And for me, ambitious is doing less. My ambitious goal this summer was to do less so I could be with my family more and in different ways. Um, So I'm curious, what does ambitious look like for you right now? Yeah, I think for me, um, that's, that's funny. I love the way you talked about like, you know, doing less, Mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also in, in a, in a bit of a way I'm trying to be, um, um, my ambition is to be uh, a little bit bolder with the podcast, to be mm-hmm. able, so um, mm-hmm. with the podcast and in life as well, to be a little bit bolder, mm-hmm. to to um, you know, like I said, to, you know, to sort of leave leave my sort of fear and apprehensions about like, oh, this won't be good, oh, this will, you know, like the self doubt mm-hmm. and the self all of that stuff, and not to say that I don't have that and that I ignore spidey senses of things that maybe aren't are going um, mm-hmm. wrong and, and and not listen to my intuition, but it's more about be bold, trust in yourself, uh, trust in, in and have faith in the people um, that are around you. And so mm-hmm. that to me is part of that ambition. And um, what I'm trying to do now as well is to – um, you know, as I mentioned before, is to, to uh, another ambitious thing that I'm trying to do, if you will, for myself, is to tear down walls like internally. So uh, my son and my daughter are actually really amazing um, hu- little humans. Uh, and I want to be, you know, I want to be the best father as possible. But one of the things mm-hmm. that's that's really kind of interesting is they they ask me, like, what are you working on? What is this? Mm-hmm. And they have creative bones in their bodies so mm-hmm. i kind of said listen if you guys want to let's make an afternoon out of this two three hours is an afternoon for for kids of this mm-hmm. age um and <laughs> and let's just let's design something together that will fall into the podcast so let's let's like you do oh. you do uh, uh, an uh you know a, a post and i do a post mm-hmm. and then we'll kind of put them together and i i promised them i said i promise i will use one of each one of your creations um, but we, we have to kind of work through it and it'll be like a fun project mm-hmm. for us to do together. Right. Um, I know people will mm-hmm. be like, well, child labor loss, but it, it, it really was like a, a, a fun, uh, sweet. <laughs> it, was, it was really so like a sweet. fun project. But, um, to answer your question, part of my ambition is to show up and to make sure that I'm not excluding, uh, people mm-hmm. that I care about along this mm-hmm. journey, which I find to be super important, is I want to say, mm. hey, this is important to me. This is important right. to my fulfillment and how this this is part of how I show up. So mm-hmm. can, you know, in your way, can you and I mm-hmm. do something mm-hmm. together with this? And mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be bold. It doesn't have to be more than 15 mm-hmm. minutes. But are, mm-hmm. are you okay that this becomes part of our shared space? So Um, There's a lot of things that I'm doing, but can I, you know, can I make the right choices about what I'm doing, what I'm not doing, and then the things that I choose to do, how do I optimize, this is my marketing hat coming on, but how do I optimize that in a way that that, um, weaves in my family where it's possible or Mm -hmm. weaves in my friends Mm -hmm. where it's possible? Right. And I hear that, like, in terms of the collective, like, how can I, how can this integrate more of the collective rather than just the individual. And that sounds like it's weaving it even more deeply into your life. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So before we round up here, I want to know, I mean, I will put your stuff in the show notes so everybody knows how to get a hold of you. Definitely your podcast. Um, what is next for you? What are you working on that um, our listeners should know about? Yeah, well, um, I just, you know, kind of like I said that this, um, this, you know, this next season, which is going to be coming up uh, probably in the next couple of weeks now. So and really just go on this um, slow and steady burn of of this march through the continent. So that's like, that's been my focus. Uh, it's been my energy. It's been my, my source of inspiration. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm actually really just enthralled with that in terms of what's next and just getting to to know my guests a bit better and and, and have connections with them. Um, and then possibly maybe, you know, possibly down the road, uh, look at the concept for 54 Lights, but look at that as a concept for other parts of the world. Because mm -hmm. ultimately what I'm trying to do here is to talk about texture. And as mm -hmm. much as if, as much of of this is an African story. It's kind of not an African story. It's a human story, right? It's about uh, the Norwegian, the Norwegian Dakota in, in you. I, mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's about that. So mm -hmm. I kind of, I'm, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm toying with the idea of like, Hey, maybe there, mm -hmm. maybe there's another iteration of this and uh, putting it out in the universe. I wouldn't have done that five years ago. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, Oh, don't do that, yeah. buddy. But um, mm -hmm. now I'm, mm -hmm. I'm okay to do that or I'm comfortable doing that. And I invite anybody who's interested in talking about it, working on that with me or just simply following and listening. I, I invite them all to just um, do whatever they, they want to do there. Um, but I'm, I'm well, I welcome co-collaborators, co-conspirers as well. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you. I can't wait to see what's next. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just share quickly what I think what I'm taking away from this. I knew in advance uh, I wanted to focus on untold stories because that's what you do in your podcast. But then something shifted in me when we started talking about our untold stories. Right. I... I started this with kind of a bigger picture concept about others. But then once we started sharing our untold stories, it, it shifted something in me and it, it reinforces this idea of how important it is to when you feel safe and are willing to stretch to say the untold, right? Um, to those who will hold it to those who will honor it. And that I think is really beautiful. So I hope our listeners today can find a moment where someone they know is worthy of holding that untold in a safe way um, and giving each other space to stretch. I think it's really beautiful. So thank you what you're doing on the big picture level of that. And, and thank you for showing up so fully today. It's really beautiful. Thank you, Sunday. And I, I, so, you know, it's funny, your show In Transit, it, it, it fits really mm -hmm. well with In Transit, right? Because that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's what it's about, mm -hmm. right? That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yep. We start, we started in one place at the beginning of the podcast, and now we're, we're somewhere else. So thank you for being here. And thank you to everybody who has been listening. This is In Transit with Sunday Bean. I appreciate you being here. I started this episode with Maya Angelou, and so it is fitting that I also finish with her. She says, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. Um. <laughs>